Hello friends, today we are going to review another very important and interesting concept which is projectile motion. So let's see what is the learning objective for today. So today we will define what is projectile motion and then we will discuss how to perform kinematic analysis of projectile motion and we will solve um, the pro uh, projectile motion using rectangular coordinates. So what is a uh, projectile motion? So first thing is that it's a motion along a curved path. That means a projectile motion is also a curvilinear motion. So how it is a little different, let's see. It is the combination of horizontal and vertical motion, which is also true for curvilinear motion. It Curvilinear motion can have horizontal and vertical components. The most important part that differentiates projectile motion to general uh, curvilinear motion is that free flight under the action of gravity. What that means is that only acceleration you will be considering throughout the motion of, a, of the projectile is that the gravitational acceleration. No other acceleration is active. And Finally, we're going to neglect the error resistance for simplicity. Um, we will not assume or consider error resistance, though in real life there will be error resistance uh, during the projectile motion uh, on Earth, right? So, um, again, a graphical representation. We have discussed the horizontal motion in our um, continuous motion analysis at the very beginning, right? So we know that part, horizontal motion, we also derive the equations. Vertical motion, we know the equation that we derive for horizontal, if we um, convert them or use them for vertical motion, we have to consider the acceleration that is taking place, plus we have to consider the gravitational acceleration where when we are considering vertical motion. In horizontal, you don't have to consider the vertical um, gravitational acceleration. but in projectile motion, like we said here, it is the combination of horizontal motion and vertical motion. So this is your projectile motion that is combination of these two. That's how it going um, in a curvilinear path. So again, to simplify, it will have a horizontal part and it will have a vertical part and together it will have curvilinear motion. So if you think, um, this ball was started from here and then move up here. If you can think this ball was here, it was having a horizontal motion up to this point and then vertical motion, it will be at that position. And that's how it has um, horizontal and vertical component. Together, it will move along the curved path. So it is, again, summation or combination of horizontal motion and vertical motion. Question, do you ever see um, some example, everyday example of um, projectile motion? Of course, the soccer, uh, the football and soccer, any other game, most of the game have something to throw and then most likely they are projectile motion. If you want to just create a projectile motion right now, just grab your a paper and make a ball like this, right? and you throw, that's your projectile motion. All right, um, let's move forward. Let's see some few more examples. We're, I'm gonna show you two examples and you should pause and differentiate between two examples, whether which one is projectile motion, which one is not, okay? So the first one, someone is throwing a basketball to the hoop right? Is it a projectile motion? Let's see another one. On the right image, you'll see a um, rocket or missile or something. It is also going a curvilinear path, right? Is it a projectile motion? So both of them have a curvilinear path, the ball and the rocket. Which one is a projectile motion? Which one is not? Have your answer ready? 
and then I'm gonna uh, tell you which one is um, the right one. So remember the third uh, point that we have discussed for projectile motion is that it has to be a free flight under the action of gravity. Now consider these two scenario, which one is under gravitational acceleration only, right? This is only the basketball because there is no other force acting. For the rocket, it is going curvilinear path. There is, of course, gravitational acceleration working downward but it has another acceleration due to the rocket engine or the rocket fuel, right? So it is not only, it is not in free flight. So um, this will not be a projectile motion, but the ball is the uh, having a projectile motion. And then um, you can just use your reasoning um, to differentiate which one you should be applying projectile motion and which one is not. Okay. So let's see how can we um, analyze um, projectile motion using rectangular coordinate mostly and of course in this course dynamics you will see mostly we're going to use um, rectangular coordinate most of them will be just using x and y so um, let's see how can we do that so projectile motion is often analyzed in rectangular components x and y x is for horizontal y is for vertical so projectile motion you'll see x and y components hints so what are the equations we're going to use if you remember our continuous uh, motion analysis we had these three equations equation of motions uh, the uh, motion equations and and um, we're going to use them for horizontal and uh, vertical analysis so the horizontal part of the projectile we're assuming the the particle is going this way there is no acceleration in x direction because it is a free flight only acceleration is downward vertical so there is no acceleration on x direction and we are not going to assume any air resistance that leads us vx equals to ux meaning final velocity equals to initial velocity how you just put a equals to zero no acceleration you will get the relationship same for here del s the change in x direction it will be a equals to zero just is just ut remember we just put x meaning it is only valid for x direction similarly if you do the same thing here a equals to zero it leads to the same relationship so on x direction these are equations r we will be using and it is derived from all the equation that we already know so what about the vertical part on the vertical motion there is an acceleration and we already said it is the gravitational acceleration um, so all you have to do replace the a with g and we say this is valid for y y direction motion so we segmented again uh, the curvilinear motion in x and y and for x we have set new set of equation for y we'll have new set of equation Again, del S is Z, A replaced by Z, and this one also, A is replaced by Z. Now, one thing to consider is that I put plus here. Now, if uh, my particle is moving upward, and I assume this is my positive direction, then the gravitation will be downward, then you have to put Z as a negative, and this will be negative. So it depends on... Um, the direction of motion if something is thrown from this direction to downward and you assume downward direction is positive then your sign will be different so just be careful of uh, the direction if it's if it's moving upward your gravitational acceleration is always downward so there will be a negative sign so we're almost at the end of our um, review session we'll just solve a quick problem and we'll be done all right so the problem says that someone is throwing water under the fire on the building and assuming he's doing a theta degree angle from the horizontal so and the initial velocity of the water is 50 feet per 80 80 feet per second what we have to find is that what is the theta what angle that person needs to be from the horizontal so that the water hits on the fired window. So let's see um, how can we solve this problem.
And um, there's also some dimensions given, right? How far he's from, how below the window is. So solution, how do we start? First, we have to see what kind of problem it is. We know it's a particle problem and it's a kinematics. There is no force involved. Um, now, so far we have learned continuous motion, projectile motion. So is it a projectile motion? If you see, since the water get out from the nozzle, there is no other force acting or no other acceleration acting other than the gravitational pull downward, right? So it's a projectile motion and is it a rectangular coordinate problem? Yes, we can solve um, it with a rectangular coordinate problem um, having X and Y components, right? So let's sol start solving um, hints. We know for projectile motion, there can be separated two part, right? All the equations that we know, X and Y. So X in direction, there is no acceleration. So we know this and for Y, this equation. So we'll just use these equations. First, um, del S, del S X means this distance, right? So 35 feet equals to ut ux t. t is the time it takes from here to be here. So what is the ux? So we know VA along this direction if we take cos theta. So we know this is the x component, right? It'll be the x component of velocity VA, VA cos theta multiplied by the time. This is the first equation, okay? We cannot solve from here, so we need to move another equation. So we'll use the y part, del y. So um, again, we have ut plus half zt squared. It is all of them is going downward. Remember the sign. This is the critical part. Most of you um, do um, mistake on the sign of those um, um, gravitational acceleration and initial velocity. So in this case, it's all easy. Um, all of them is going downward. Water is going, the movement is position changing downward. The velocity is downward and the gravitational acceleration is downward. So I put all of them negative, assuming the upward direction, upward direction is positive. So all of them are negative. So I have this equation and that equation. So um, if you see, we know as del x 35, VA cos theta, VA we also know, we don't know the cos theta. So we can find T if I take VA cos theta at the bottom of del SX. And this T value can be replaced here and we'll get this um, equation after simplification. If you plug the value of VA and then if you do um, uh, rearrangement, you will get this equation. So it's your job to take th do those steps by yourself and let me know if you see any problem. Um, so you'll get this equation and if you see it's a polynomial second order so you'll have two answers right um, so let's see what are those answers if you solve for them you'll get theta equals to 24.9 and theta equals to 85.2 hmm which one is the right answer make your guess right both of them are right answer how let me show you Theta equals to 24.9 degree. That means this, this, this. If you if you put your host like this, 24.9 below the horizontal line, it'll hit the window. How about if I throw upward? So if I almost throw vertical, it'll go like this and then fall down, right? Same as the basketball that you saw we're throwing. You see the theta is 85, so it's almost 90, right? So it is not vertical is just a little angle like this and it will come back again. So there's two way the person can throw the water. He can directly throw 24, he can throw upward at 85 degree angle and it will be uh, at the window. So both of this, them are correct answer and those are the analysis. So we have solved the problem. Let's solve a more problem from the book and we'll solve more in class. Um, so that was it for today for projectile motion. Um, next, we're going to cover the uh, normal and tangential coordinate. Till then, um, thank you. See you.